My first scripture is from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 13, verse 14. Elisha had become sick with illness, of which he would die. Then George, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept on his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elijah said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. But you can see that this man was going home, and yet he was in control. Uh, the end of that story is quite interesting. The prophet didn't tell him how many to shoot. He just said to him, take your arrows and shoot. He took his arrow in obedience and turned to the direction and he shot. He shot a certain number and he stopped. And then he hit the ground with it. And the prophet said, look, why did you do that? Who told you when to stop? You see, what you've done is that you successfully weighed off this current attack, but they will come back. But if you had shot a little more, you'd have put them totally to rest forever. Now, hear me. There are certain problems in your life that we put rest forever this morning. Amen. Verse 20. Then Elisha died, and they buried him, naturally, as you follow. And the raiding bands of Moab invaded the land. You see, when I read this, it just hit me on Thursday for the first time. I thought, ah, where were they before he died? That they waited until he died before they come to raid, because they dare not. Because, you see, you begin to occupy more with understanding and with knowledge. I'm talking on capacity under utilization. I'm talking of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks of the church, as it were. In fact, first of all, about Jesus. He said, what makes you think that you have the power? He said, I can summon a legion of angels right now. So what makes you think you have the power? And when they came, they said, we're looking for Jesus. Ah, you don't know Jesus after all these things. <laughs> You've been trying to kill him since, since only God knows. You're now coming to ask. You, saw, you could not identify him. Are you any problem? The devil has problems. So don't let him deceive you at all. He has problems. Yeah. And when they came, he said, oh, I am the one. <laughs> he said, I'm the one. Boom, 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 they all fell down. So could they have killed him? By their own power. But not him, but here at the church, the Bible said no one dare Book of Acts. That's the body of Jesus. The body of Christ on earth. The body of Christ on earth. Nobody dare. Dare. I'm talking of underutilization of what you have. Nobody dare. From today, they dare you. They dare it. They finish up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But you've got to know what you have. Nobody dare. But daily, the Lord added to the church as many as were saved. They could not join them. They could not dare them. Rather, they esteemed them highly. I'm talking of the anointing. They esteemed them highly. And yet God added to the church daily as many as were saved. So they dare not attack when he was alive. So Moab then started invading the land in the spring of the year. 21. So it was as they were burying a man. Oh, I thought it was Elisha that died, that gave them the courage. What about this man? We don't know his name. Now listen to me closely. Life is about assignment. When your assignment is done, you are gone. To keep you here is to create problems for you. As far as Elisha was concerned, his assignment was concluded. But for this man, his assignment was not. That's why we were not told his name. Must have been a young man. As a matter of fact, theologian says, he's a young, I mean, he was a young man. But something happened as they were burying him. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly, despite they spied a band of raiders. They saw the Moabites coming. <laughs> and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and took the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Okay. Elisha was dead. The anointing did not die. 
Elisha had finished his assignment, but there were still more assignments of God on earth. So some people will still have to do it. So the devil thought, now, don't mind him, he's gone. So let's go and attack them. And so maybe the devil, they had attacked somebody and they were carrying the person to bury. To bury. And the mothers were, Ooh. and the genuine people that had a loss were really mourning their loss. And that's why, hear me well, don't depend on emotions. They don't, they, won't, they don't give you anything. Does not mind the person through whom the emotion is coming. It doesn't matter who. The day God delivers you from emotional pressure, you are free. I thought that was a strong emotion. It was a loss. And they were mourning. And they were crying. They were really crying. But when they saw the Moabite, ah, they fled. So one emotion was stronger. Fear was stronger than mourning. So, so, I thought they were mourning. Hey, boom. Ah, I beg. Anybody deal with you with strong emotions, be careful. But those who stand thick and thin with you, and you know these ones are genuine Christians, please, even when they offend you, forgive them quickly. You forgive everybody, but forgive them quickly. Now you know this one has the spirit of God in him and in her. Please. You see, the wound of such a person is a blessing. That is when you feel that they, offend, they wound you, it's a blessing. You know, because they, do, they dwell on the truth. But the cajoling and the praises of a fake, ah, if you follow it, you are gone. I thought they were weeping. Boom! Ah, ah, that shows how much they love him. But something happened. In their haste and fear, they dumped the, bo the body into a grave. But it was the grave of Elisha. Come on, church, are you here with me? Guess what happened? As soon as his body touched the bones of Elisha, the man got up. You have the power? I know I have the power in the name of Jesus. Anything in your system that is, that is pulling death towards you, that is turning up death in your life, I say in your life, I say in your health, in your marriage, in your home, in your finances, I command you reverse the name of Jesus. Reverse! Reverse! The blood of Jesus is against you and I topple you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. I can hear you. The devil thought he's got his friends with that guy. And the church said, what you cool? Isn't he dead? Bury! They could not bury. They will never be able to bury you. Amen. As in the place of assignment, no creature will be able to bury you. Amen. They were going. They dumped the body. They saw the Moabite. They fled. When they looked back to see where the Moabite was coming, it was the man that was following them. <laughs> so they ran for their lives that day. It wasn't just for the Moabites anymore. They were running. For... <laughs> hey! I see everyone that has pursued you to the place of death. On account of you, the wicked will begin to flee when no man pursues. In the name of Jesus. Elijah had cut out the feet of Mount Carmel to stop the evil of his days. If your anointing does not stop evil, check it again. If your anointing is just me, my, and I, my fame, my wealth. Hey, it doesn't matter what is happening around you. It's a fake anointing. If it's God's anointing to stop evil, they'll be afraid of it. If evil thrives under your anointing, you, are, you, have, you, have, you check what you have. Go back home and check what you have. That is, go back to him and ask him, is this true? So a man came here, at least 450 or so, uh, prophets of Baal were destroyed because life is a contest, whether you like it or not. If you are following God, the devil will challenge you. And that's why it's a fight of faith. And then Jezebel came and Ahab told Jezebel what Elijah had done. And he now threatened him. Elijah. Man under some anointing, not God's anointing. So anointings are, <laughs> there are different kinds of anointing. There are, there are magic anointings. There are occultic anointings. There are satanic anointings. And they, what beats me is that they, they think they are powerful. They are very confident and cocky because you are refusing to stand on your, in your own place. The day you begin to stand, their trouble begins. 
He finished them. Then the woman now threatened him. He fled. Question, why would such a man, under such a heavy anointing, flee? His humanity took over. And what does that tell you? Uh, anytime you lean on the flesh, the devil takes over. Anytime. It doesn't matter what God has used you to achieve before. That's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit and will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So he fled. And there he was complaining that every one of, every, every of his prophet of God was dead. He was the only one. Again, you see what? Elijah was not like that. But because of the state he was, can you see he thought he was the only one? Without being prideful, he actually thought he was the only one. He wasn't. God will never make that mistake. Don't think you're the only one. The person next to you may be the next person he's about to lift up. Lift up. Can you imagine him thinking, I'm the only one? God said, ah, no, now let me correct you. I don't just have one other, two others, ten others, hundred others. Hey, hey, hey. The day you begin to think I'm the only one, you will raise 7,000. So God had to correct his theology there, his knowledge of him. And that's why today, pastors, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles, there's never one big apostle that is only the one. There are millions of them. And whether it's a prophet, apostle, pastors, all of them, are, everything concluded in Jesus. But when, he give, when we give the gift to men, he divided it into five and spread it. He will never make that mistake. So don't you ever think I'm the only one. So at that point, God said, well, it's because it's come to the end of his assignment. So you know what? Please. You know, he fasted, God fed him supernaturally, then he walked, you know, for many days, and you know, I said, now go and anoint Jehu, anoint her. Hey, you are still useful to me. Your assignment still remains one. Go and anoint the next, the next generation. And that was how Elisha came on scene, remember? He was a very business, a very business-oriented person. He was a very, very industrious person. There was no, no, no atom of laziness at all. He was yoking with how many, how many oxen? Twelve oxen. How did go? People would struggle with two. You had 12 and he was controlling them. And Elijah walked past him and said, wow. And Holy Ghost said, that's him. Guess what he did? He didn't say a word. He just dropped his mantle. The man, woof. He ran out. He left everything and ran after the man of God. So the question was, so are you ready to come now? He said, let me go and say bye-bye. Guess what he did? He slaughtered the animals. He used the, the yoke sticks as fuel and prepared good meals for a sent forth party. You know what he did? He was, he was demonstrating his gratefulness to God and he said that he was born in the bridge. Born in the bridge behind him. I will never return to that again in my life. This is the reason I'm, this is now the reason I'm created. That one was a means to an end. No matter how successful I've been there, this is it now. The problem with some of us is that we don't want to burn that bridge. We say, yeah, hallelujah. But you still hold on to that. Now, I don't say leave your business. Come and do ministry. No, don't come home. Except God tells you. And when God tells you, we'll make a place for you. So you don't say, God told me to resign. I come and meet you, Pastor Tawo. I say, ah, well, I don't, I, I'm here to help. Then there came a time, I said, you know what? Stay here and take care of business, Elisha. God has sent me to. Mm -hmm. Elisha says, sir, I'm called to follow you. As long as you live, and as long as God is alive, I will follow you, sir. Okay. He went. He got there and said, will you please stay here and take care of business? He sent me to this. He said, no, sir. As long as God live it and your soul live it, I will follow you. Ah. Again, he said, stay here until they go to Jordan. Hello, are you here? I'm talking the anointing, the anointing now. When they go to Jordan, that was a barrier. A, a natural thing will not let them continue. Which natural thing can stand against you? Which greater thing can stand against you? In the place of your assignment? What? Amen. I say in the name of Jesus, in the place of your assignment, nothing created can stop you. Amen. So Jordan was there. Nobody had been able to cross Jordan at that time. Or you need a means. But see, everywhere Elijah and Elisha would get to, there were those who were 
who understood, who could see to some extent, who, sons of the prophets, they were those who have some measure of the anointing too. And they would gather and they would look. People can be prideful with things. And they will look. And immediately they will assume that Elisha didn't know. It's amazing how people think. People are meeting you and they assume that you don't know. You don't have. Sometimes he beats me. Say, Elisha, do you know that the Lord will take your master off your head today? He said, please keep your peace. I'm aware. But therefore, they knew and they thought he was blind. <laughs> That's spiritual pride. Still talking about underutilization. Accent the teacher about Jesus. How God did what? Come on, talk to me. How God did what? Jesus Christ of Nazareth with what? What's the source of the anointing? The Holy Ghost. Who does the anointing? God. For what? For his assignment. So I looked at this and said, if you ask me to define the anointing in the way I relate, or it relates to me, I've come to understand him, it's carving the victory part for your assignment in life. When God wants you to see the victory part to fulfilling your assignment, he tells you you're anointed. He shows you you are anointed. And where is your role here? You must believe God. You must take him at his word. Then he handed over to his disciples. Tell you until you receive the endowment of power, the Holy Spirit. And when Holy Spirit comes, that's God smearing you with God. And on the day of Pentecost, those who were fearful were no more fearful. I see every spirit of fear disappears from your life in the name of Jesus. He doesn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and the sound. I'm talking of using the anointing and letting him do what he has here to do. He got so much that people will bring all the sick to the streets and where Peter, they are looking for Peter's shadow. I'm talking of the anointing. He was the bones of Elijah. He was the shadow of Peter. He was in the Old Testament, he was in the New Testament. The anointing. You're looking for wisdom? He is the spirit of understanding. You're looking for understanding? He is the spirit of cancer. You're looking for cancer? He is the spirit of strength, fortitude, greatness. You know what he said to Solomon? He said, I will give you name like the name of all the big men on earth. You talk of fortitude. Is the Holy Ghost. You're looking for name? Stop struggling. Let him do it. It's not much what you're calling. Can you see all this? You're talking of creativity. Uh -uh. Which invention? Go to the book of Proverbs. You find it there. Healing power. Uh -uh. The whole of the book of Acts. Go check it. But give me one last word here. If you see me. Now, see all of them in the book of Hebrews. See what they did. But see what they did is nothing compared to what you will do. But how, how do you achieve it? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, the one that anoints his own, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Looking unto Jesus, uh, so his focus and demand. So if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that spirit dwells inside of you, which I know it does, then he will quicken your mortal body. Anybody here believes that the Holy Ghost dwells inside of him? One last thing. He will teach you. He will take off what is mine and reveal to you. Everything the Father has is mine. And the Holy Ghost will make you a part of the deal. You have access. He's the spirit that convinces and convicts of sin. He's the spirit that helps us to know that we were sinners. And so we can say, God, help me. He's the same Holy Ghost. So he's been telling you now that you need to be part of this deal. You need to be part of this bunch of people who can rule their times into generations. And you are here today. This is not a child's play. This is reality. If you're under the sound of my voice and you're not sure you're born again, can you just stand up 